All right, so we're going to take a look at graphic organizers. Um, these are visual ways of organizing facts and ideas. Okay, there's many kinds out there, and they all have different purposes. And so we're going to take a look at a few and hopefully give you a better insight in how to use them. Now, the purpose of using them is because all of our memories work differently in the sense that we have different capacities, and so we're going to try to improve our memory. So here we have different categories. We can compare people, places, and then on different um, items. So, for example, in a history class, um, if we're looking at different presidents in early America, uh, what we could do is use the top portion of our graphic organizer to put the president's names. And then on the side, we can compare just different major characteristics, such as big ideas, um, supporting de facts or details, and maybe some vocabulary that would be good to look at for all of them. Okay, this could be used um, to look at formulas for math and science. You could put the steps, you know, on how to complete it in a particular example for studying purposes. Here's just for vocabulary, whether it's for, let's say, English, science, or social studies. Um, and there's a little memory trick so that you can kind of have a cue to call that when you need it. Here's our typical Venn diagram where we put the things that are different about two objects on the outside, and the similarities go right in the middle. Good compare and contrast. Here's a good, uh, just a simple, very elementary school way of um, brainstorming for a topic or project um, and any different other ideas of such. Here we have a bigger um, concept for maybe a unit, maybe in history or English, a brief explanation of what it is, and then a picture or diagram to kind of give us a little visual for that memory. Here's a great example of a flashcard um, where you can put the definition on the back, um, an example of what it looks like, and then maybe a picture to memorize that. And this is just what a blank one would look like. Sometimes in science, we have to do circular flow models to show um, just different life cycles or different cycles in general, and this can be used in a whole different host of issues. Here we have cause and effect, problem solution. So just showing that, um, that link, that connection, uh, or causation, if you will. Next, we're going to compare two different things. Uh, we put the two items up top, and on the left side, we put what's similar about them. On the right, it's different, similar to the Venn diagram. Here's just kind of like a, a main idea, uh, and then we break it down to its component details and then any specific evidence to support that, either from text, documentation, etc. All right, these next few are just steps for a problem. You can use this in math or science uh, on how to complete something. This can be done even for just writing processes. All right, our goal for using concept maps is to be able to correctly place terms in the appropriate categories on your concept map organizer. It shows relationships and gives us the bigger picture of what we are learning about. Okay, here would be just a bunch of terms that maybe you pulled out of a, a unit you're learning. Here's an organization system, social, economic, political, there's many of those. Uh, different ways you could do foreign, domestic, any, any major topics. And here's a, what a full graphic or a concept map would look like. So how do we do one? Well, we put a big idea in the center, and then we come up with a few topics, main topics that come out of that big idea, like social, economic, political, foreign relations, you know, culture, art, architecture, just bigger, bigger concepts. And as we break it down, we go into smaller, more specific details. Okay. So here are some of our basic ones. Let's say on a, a history on uh, President Adams. Okay. Now, if we were going to do a full, complete one, we have the main idea, which is the War of 1812. And the big ideas we felt were the causes, okay, what caused this war, okay, so we give the facts, uh, several different facts, what caused it. Then we build off this relationship by giving us the key events of that war, okay, what happens and what are the big things we need to know for that unit. All right. And last but not least are the effects of this war. And um, we build off the main effects, what, what's the outcome of this war. And once again, this can be, have been broken down in political, social, economic, or any other major concepts. Right, and here's our present Adam ones from before, fully filled out with domestic policy, foreign affairs, broken down into its most specific ideas. Another one with President Jefferson, major terms, and it completely filled in. OK, 
Okay, quick reading tips. Sometimes when we're reading a textbook or any book, um, they give us major titles, okay, usually bold, bigger font, okay, even in italics to kind of show us that there's a new section with new ideas, okay, and try to pull out the main information for that, all right, several ways you could do it. One major way is just looking at review questions in that particular unit. So here I'm looking at the great compromise, well, where am I going to find it? Ah, there we go, get a major heading, right, one of the few ways you can use that. Another thing is when we read, <clears throat> we come across complex compound sentences, which are very difficult to read at times, because in order to hold all the information, it takes a lot of memory power, which some of us have difficulty with. So what I'm doing here is I'm breaking it down into different sections. What are the major ideas, major points that this person is making in the sentence? And then after I block off these ideas, and there's a lot of ideas in this sentence, right, there's four ideas, I'm going to then just put them in a linear motion, okay, from top to bottom. And then what that does is it lets me see each component separately so my brain can process that information. And then I have a much greater chance at understanding it. And here I even just put a little question mark and annotated. Why was Great Britain mad? And then as I'm writing, although you can't see it, one of the words I didn't understand was the word seize, S-E-I-Z-E. -E. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look it up on my iPad and it means to take. And so now I'll go in there and define that. So Great Britain is going to take American ships. Uh, now I understand why America was mad. Makes sense. Three, two, one.